don't care whether you're full Samoan or whether you've got half Samoan or quarter Samoan or however that people categorize it. But if you have one drop of Samoan in you, then you're ours. You belong to me and I belong to you. And we claim you as much as you claim us. Eh? Um, my name is Mary Otangawaya, which is my married name, my husband's family from Bailua Paloli in Savai. I have three Matai titles on two from my father's side and one from my, my mum's side. My family are the Tofaiono family and Tanvasa family, and on my mother's side are Bulus. We have five adult children and seven, soon to be eight awesome grandkids. I was born in Samoa. Um, I was actually born in 1962, which was the year Samoa regained its independence from the colonial powers of New Zealand, namely at that time. We came, migrated to New Zealand October 1967, I think, and my parents were also, um, like all migrants, struggling um, to make ends meet and understand this new world that we'd come to. Basically, grew up very Samoan because we went to a Samoan church. When you're a kid, you don't know any better, eh? and because our church was very conservative, you know, 100% Samoan language, you really resent it. Eh? You think, why do I have to speak Samoan, and why do I have to do all that? But in fact, it's been proficiency in Samoan language and culture has really um, formed who I am today. Yeah. I come from a family who are um, who also have a real love, real clarity in who they are and as Samoans. I remember as a young child seeing my, my grandfather, paternal grandfather, my father and his brother writing these ledgers, you know, those big ledger books, those massive things. They eventually wrote three of those ledgers and they just kept writing and writing and writing and, and I'd sit there and, and look at and read it and when I could sneak in and have a look at it. Dad's brother, Tanuwasa Tofaiono, later went on to write I think something like 20 books in um, Samoan language and he was well known for that. So I was the child that was attached to all that. I was the child that went everywhere to all these whalabi loveys and um, I was the child that the grandfather would write these little, you know, things to say and that. Uh, and I loved it. I just flourished in it. It, um, it was a confidence-building thing for me to do that at a young age. Or or far no or mea poeata. Children are cameras. Hey, eh? they click 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 everything. Eh? What that saying means is that children see everything. They hear everything. They absorb everything. And you know if they. If, if the environment is great, of course they're going to absorb that, eh? they're, going to, they're like sponges. Eh? Growing up in that environment, seeing it written, seeing it practiced in life, with, you know, as we engaged with our relatives, solidified who I was. Yeah. My uncle who wrote all those books, you know, had a dream that he had been given so much and he wanted to give away so much. Eh? So it was about how can he share what he has been given. The, the word fasoa means to share. A eh? soa is the two things, like you and a partner. Um, you can say fasoa means to share a burden on your shoulder. The motivation for me is we have been given something. I have been given a gift, a God-given gift of whatever it is. And so it's it's incumbent on me to fasoa that. The other thing that is in the circles that I work with, we see so much sadness, we so, see so much deprivation, we, and I really believe our indigenous knowledge is, is, an, is a pathway to, to healing ourselves. Because eh? the indigenous knowledge is something that our ancestors have passed to us, it shows us all these clues about how to live life. Eh? The way our houses are set up in Samoa gives us clues about how to live. You've got the whale in the front, which is the the, the matai of the family, that's the main house, and behind that you've got the whaleo'os, where the, the family, the sleeping quarters, behind that you've got the whalelua, the kitchen, and then the, 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 the umbu, outdoor cooking, and then you've got the bath, the toilets out somewhere at the back there, and then you've got the plantations. Hey, even that setup gives us a clue about how to live life, about how we, one, 
the main house. The Matai might be the one on display. He does all the talking, but in fact, he's nothing without the houses behind him, eh? his family. And those families are nothing without the young people who serve in the other houses. Eh? But then the young people can't serve if they don't have a plantation. In other words, in New Zealand, if they don't have education, if they don't have a job, eh? how can they serve their families? So the indigenous knowledge, I guess, is really not my knowledge, it's just remembering things, those clues that our ancestors have left for us and trying to share those codes to open that with others. So I deliver a programme called Aoa or Ol Samoa means I am Samoan. And the programme focuses on supporting people to be the best in what they are by being Samoan. I call it Fatu Ngā Titi, uh, professional development. Fatu means to, to build up something, fatu, fatu. Uh, titi is, so before we had these, you know, um, you know, fabric, balangi fabric, we, the Samoan attire um, included a titi, which is a, um, a string of flowers that people wore on their hips and, and they would then be put on a string and people, and that's how we, if you like, our makeup, uh, you know, that's how we went out and, um, and so the, um, Fatunga titi, the idea of fatunga is to build up your titi. So sometimes whatever your role is, whether you're the um, policy officer or something, you can be better by fatunga titi, by, by building. Our job is to come alongside you and help build up that garland of flowers, of fragrances to enable you to do your job. We don't care whether you have no knowledge or lots of knowledge. Um, the idea is that often it's about going back to the basic values and re un and understanding where that's all come from. Where you are now, that you, if you're in disengaged or not connected, that's the price of migration. Something had to go. Our parents didn't come here to be fasa more. Eh? They came here to make a living and help our families back home, provide the best opportunities. And so often, teaching of fasa more was not an intentional thing that they prioritised in their mind. It was to put food on the table and, you know. And I'd really just like people to understand that because you look Samoan but don't speak Samoan, it's not your fault. That's the price of migration, hey. I don't care whether you're full Samoan or whether you've got half Samoan or quarter Samoan or however that people categorise it. But if you have one drop of Samoan in you, then you're ours. You belong to me and I belong to you here yeah. and we claim you as much as you claim us.